We are seeing shares of Moderna soaring today uh, after the company announced it is entering the late stage of their clinical trials for the coronavirus coronavirus vaccine. Researchers will enroll 30,000 patients to take part in the phase three trials across more than 85 different sites in the U.S. Speaking to Yahoo Finance earlier today, Moderna CEO Stefan Bansell said if the vaccine is successful, he'll have to consider the company's profits when pricing its doses for the broader market. We have said before, we have to make a profit out of the first product we sold because we have invested $2 billion of our shareholder capital since we started the company. The company has never made a profit. And as I said, we raised another $1.3 billion of equity capital in May that is going to make product at risk, assuming the product is successful. And so we need to get a return. We are highly aware that this is a pandemic uh, and that we need to be very, very responsible how we price the product. We've said before, we will price the product within the range of vaccines already approved. Dr. Jason Campbell, he's a third year resident in the Department of Anesthesiology in Portland at the Oregon Health and Science University. And uh, Jason, I'd love to start with that Moderna news today. Um, this is certainly a, a promising development. Uh, we heard from Stefan Bansell there that they're likely to get everybody signed up within the next four, six to eight, four to eight weeks and then could potentially have all the data ready to go by October or November. Um, as somebody who has been on the front line seeing how this virus has developed, um, just your reaction on what we heard from Moderna today. Sure, well, I think that many of us are excited about this opportunity, uh, about what they're doing. Uh, first, you know, it, it's important to recognize that the pandemic is ongoing and that you know we need to get a vaccine as soon as possible, but we need a vaccine that's safe and effective as soon as possible possible. And so those are the key with what a phase three trial is and what starts today hopefully will be a very promising uh, piece to that. There's certainly a, a number of companies um, that are obviously involved in vaccine development at this point. Um, can you speak to what's different about what Moderna is developing here? We've obviously got 30,000 people who are will be enrolled moving forward. But there's also a new technology that Moderna is attempting. And Dr. Fauci earlier was asked about this, about how concerned he was um, about this particular vaccine um, and the timeline as well. You know, he said he's comfortable with where things are. Um, what are your thoughts and help us understand what's different about what Moderna is doing? Sure. Well, let's talk about first the, the idea of the timeline. So their hope is to have uh, these vaccines ready by 2021. So I think that Dr. Fauci has made it understandable that that's a realistic timeline. Now, with the, the use of the mRNA technology and the fact that this is something that has not necessarily been done before, it has not necessarily shown to be um, to be fruitful, I think that that makes people a bit concerned. And of course, anything in, in science, in medicine that's new is something that uh, definitely raises eyebrows. That being said, though, um, we obviously have seen that new technology works, and that's the history of, of our country. And so I think that this is one of those things I implore people to look up for themselves, but to recognize that um, we should feel a, a bit a bit skeptical, but also a bit um, confident in, what, in all the money that we're putting into this company, that they're going to create a vaccine that works. Let's talk about what's uh, been playing out in the meantime on the ground in a number of states. Uh, you're in Oregon, um, out on the West. Uh, we've seen a, a number of states, including Arizona and California as well, uh, seeing huge surges over the last several weeks. Um, there's a sense here that things are, are starting to kind of plateau. Um, yeah. Not sure if that's the right word to use, but uh, can you give me a sense of what it is you're seeing on the ground there? And are we starting to see these restrictions that were put in place several weeks ago uh, starting to actually be effective? And are we starting to see the results of that? Absolutely, thank you. Certainly the restrictions are working. I think yeah, their concern is the lack of restrictions and becoming lackadaisical or really not taking the restrictions to the fullest. Um, you know, we obviously don't have a national mask mandate in effect right now, but there are states, including Oregon, where we are requiring that everyone wears a mask when they're inside any location require that they wear a mask when they're outside and if they are within six feet of someone. Uh, when I've been out on my runs, I've noticed that people are running with the mask and they'll pull the mask up when they are near someone. Uh, and then if they're 
return to being by themselves, they may lower their mass. So it's just, it, that's not comfortable, but people are doing what they need to do to help the greater good. Um, as you noted before, when you talk about numbers, I would say that uh, the numbers are still, we're seeing an increase, but the increase is less uh, today than it was the day before. So we're hoping that that decreases, but obviously our numbers are still high, uh, 4.2 million confirmed cases. Um, and you know, we definitely need to be very aware that this disease is, is a real and it's, it's a, a threat to all of us. What about the issues about testing? I mean, what are you seeing yeah. there um, in particular on the delays around it? I mean, we've heard from a number of these companies who have essentially said that we are at capacity and trying to get this, which um, is a big concern given that we're, we're still in July and we're expecting yeah. um, what many have said will be a second wave in the fall. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. We're, there's a you know, long journey ahead of us. Um, as far as the testing, we certainly need fast and uh, faster turnaround times, as well as fast and reliable turnaround times. And I come back to that, uh, just as with the medication being safe and effective, uh, to get a, a false negative um, where you are actually positive, but you're told uh, the opposite is definitely not helpful to anyone, especially yourself, if you then go out and are around a person or other persons and uh, uh, infecting people uh, with no level of awareness. So uh, we definitely need to have uh, stronger and, and faster turnaround times for our um, when it comes to that. Um, and that's just something that is, is crucial to helping to navigate this pandemic and navigate it well. And Jason, you mentioned that things are, the numbers are still increasing, but the increases are slowing. Um, and yet we look to August, we've got universities that will be returning, although a big chunk of them will be largely online. You've got schools still re reconsidering um, whether to have classes um, or have uh, courses in person. Right. What's your biggest concern as you look to some of the developments we're likely to see in the next month or two? Yeah, biggest concern is when you talk about density. Uh, and so for, you know, my alma mater, you know, the Ohio State University, you're looking at, you know, 55,000 undergrads, uh, you know, potentially embarking on the same campus. And so how quickly could that become a very dire and, and poor situation, uh, which is why I implore and I'm excited to hear that more people are looking into online learning um, and, and distant learning, um, at least for the foreseeable future, because I think that's what it's going to take uh, to move forward. Uh, and until we potentially until we have a vaccine, but at least for the foreseeable future, as you noted. Okay, Dr. Jason Campbell joining us there. Uh, thanks so much for your insight today. Hey, thank you for having me.